Hey, Yellow it's your boy Impact Joker coming at you with the first of our Monday morning something. I'm not sure like what to officially call it, but every Monday morning I'm gonna be writing a like a little short story written by you guys. I'm gonna try and stream it's the Sunday night before and let you guys pick out names, characters, where it's gonna be, what it's kind of gonna be about, stuff like that. So this is the first one. I didn't get a chance to stream Sunday night. But so I had, or so I had my wonderful girlfriend Ashlyn Cunningham give me some, in, give me some uh, ideas for the story. Now I will have you know she was half asleep, maybe fully asleep, whenever she sent these messages telling me what to say. Because as you'll see from the story, it gets uh, it gets a little weird. But she told me the, she told me the character names, what they're doing, and where they're doing it. So that's credits to her for that stuff. And. Uh, this is the first one. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, then I'll, uh, I'll, my Twitch account will be down in the description. Check it out every Sunday night and come tell me what stories you want to see. Also, feel free to comment what art you want to see for Fan Art Friday. And um, I hope you guys enjoy the story. Thank you. Frogman and Big Money invent the squeg. The cold wind blew Frogman's hair across his face. He pushed it back and jerked his collar higher up his head. He pulled the leash in his hands tighter, forcing the small chinchilla, big man, closer to his leg. They walked towards a looming factory as the snow came down around them. It was the middle of December, and they were in the middle of Russia. Frogman heard a small whimper behind him and turned to find Big Money shivering to the point where he struggled to walk. Picking up his pet chinchilla and placing it in the space between his coat and undershirt, he trudged onto the factory. Nobody was around the building. Nobody was probably outside at this time. It's snowing, and the sun had yet to rise for dawn. Frogman preferred to be alone when working. His only companion was Big Money. A few moments later, they finally entered the building. Flipping the power switch, the building was illuminated and generators rumbled as heat began to course through the building. Throwing off his overcoat, Frogman set Big Money on the ground and released his collar. Frogman began to prepare himself for the work at hand. He threw on a white overcoat and a set of goggles, tied his hair back into a ponytail, and put on his leather gloves. He went through the same process with Big Money, only he tied his ears back and gave him leather booties. Looking quite the pair, the pair walked over to the center of the room. In the center of the room, there were a few contraptions. In the very center, there was a crater, but only about a foot deep. It was lined with a metal structure and extended to about half a foot above the floor. On the left side of the hole was a workbench. On it lay what looked like an egg, only split in half. It had a sort of heating vent in the bottom half, while the top contained a breathing mask. While the outside was a blue painted metal, the inside was padded with leather. A few tubes dangled inside the egg, while their exteriors led to a group of tanks behind the crater. The egg was actually a squeg. A squeg is an egg-shaped mechanism that is used for hibernation, but for children. If a child goes unadopted for too long, they are placed in a squeg, which gives them all the nutrients needed for survival, but halts the growing process. At least, this was the hope of Frogman, for the first squeg was the only one, and had not been tested. The two scientists got to work. Frogman was tightening the tubes to make sure there wasn't any leakage, while Big Money was busy touching up on the painting on the outside. Tightening the last tube, Frogman went to a computer just to the right. He tapped away and entered the calculation to data needed to properly feed whomever was to be placed in the squeg. He walked over to check the tank connected to the tubes where they were filled. One was oxygen and the other was simply labeled nutrients. It was a mix of different vitamins and minerals that could be injected directly to the bloodstream. Each tank contained up to five years of their own contains. With a glint of a tear in his eye, he approached Big Money. Stroking the chinchilla's back softly, he pulled a small needle from his pocket. He turned over his beloved pet and gave him a little shot to help knock him out. Big Money did not squirm. He simply reached up and licked Frogman's nose, now wet with tears. As he began to calm more and more, Frogman placed him in the squeg and strapped him in. He combined the two squeg halves after giving a kiss to Big Money's forehead and carried the contraption over to the crater. He set it down and returned to the computer. 
entering a few commands, the squeg began to rise on a pedestal with the tubes leading up to it. Frogman put back on his overcoat and began to exit the building. At the door, he turned and looked one last time at his companion. And now I must wait, he said to himself. The tears had frozen on his cheeks as he turned his car on and drove away. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that story. I know that was kind of a sad story at the end. You'll learn that I... This may sound kind of messed up, but I kind of like writing sad stories. But I'll, 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 I'll get some happy ones in there from time to time, trust me. But this one, this one, I, it just ended up that way in my mind. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you do, feel free to leave a like. And thank you guys for liking, watching, commenting, and subscribing. And as usual, this has been your boy, Impacted Joker. Y'all have a nice day.